and that is drivable. It's finally back on the road, which is wonderful. Um, look at this just beautiful stream of snow. Isn't it beautiful in upstate New York in the winter? It really is. It's a winter wonderland. Absolutely gorgeous, but I digress. And welcome back to Janky AF. As you can see here by this gentleman with his great snow blower down there, I can see that. Uh, we had a nice snowy day here up in uh, upstate New York. Tis the season, probably the biggest snow of the year. And uh, this video is going to be about car roulette because as you can see the Volkswagen is back in the mix now. I didn't want to drive it in the winter but uh, circumstances have forced my hand. Now of course after that we have the beautiful 2012 Ford Transit Connect. And lastly we have Susan which is my lovely sweetheart Julia's uh, 2009 Subaru Forester which does look pretty good until you walk around this side. Now this is mangled and uh, it goes all the way down to the door here. Um, the door actually does open and we're gonna do another video all about that particular. But um, another th great thing about upstate New York, especially in the winter, is deer. And uh, of course, Julia did not have um, collision or I forget the other thing above collision is, she only had liability and uh, we can't sue the deer. So, um, and God rest that deer's soul because we think it's probably gone here. Um, so, here's the roulette part of it. Julia can't drive this now. It actually does start up, but we think it might be leaking some fluid and we wanna get it checked out, see what it's gonna be, blah, blah, blah. So in the meantime, uh, I gave her the Jetta to drive. So she's driving the Jetta, even though it's, um, you know, not the greatest thing in the world. And I'll get to that um, because I do wanna keep this thing. It lives 10 years of its life in Texas. Now it was an upstate New York car eventually, originally. So, you know, it's already got its stuff. I don't wanna make it worse. Other issue is the transit. Okay, so we swap out the Subaru for the Jetta. Now the other issue is the transit. The transit, God bless it, is just a beast and it's been so reliable. But now of course, we got our ODB reader as you can see there. And it's at that stage of its life where it's it's not, not even throwing codes. And this is the annoying part. I took it in for an inspection. I got a 10 day temporary inspection because it's throwing monitors. So you would take out the battery, you go to inspect, you can't inspect it because in New York State you need to only have one monitor, um, which is not even a code. It's just like this, the test they do after you reset the system. So it's got, I think, three, and then, <laughs> so I went by my OB, OBD reader. I've never had one for some reason, even though I'm supposedly a car person. Um, so it's throwing, and then the monitors went up. So now you have to do this drive cycle thing where you drive, I'm gonna put some Cataclean in it, which sounds like a really janky product. And then just like, you gotta like floor the engine and mash the gas pedal and try to burn off all your, you know, residual debris in your catalytic converter. So I'm hoping I can get that to finally pass inspection, but I don't like driving my cars if they're not passed because you know, you can get a ticket for $300 or whatever, plus $200 surcharge just cause your car is, you know, running a little rich or whatever it is and i'll save my rant about all that uh, bureaucracy and government for another time um i am a tax paying citizen uh so we can't drive the transit so what are we going to do well i do have the uh of course 1995 buick Sabre, which i'll try to cut to um and that is drivable it's finally back on the road which is wonderful um look at this just beautiful stream of snow isn't it beautiful in upstate new york in the winter it really is, it's a winter wonderland. Absolutely gorgeous, but I digress. So I could drive my LeSabre, but I really am loath to drive that thing in the winter because it came from New Jersey. It's pretty clean underneath. It's got a lot of surface rust, but nothing crazy. The sub subframe mounts, I'm told are a problem issue on that car. And the fuel lines are also a little long in the tooth. Now I asked the garage that I had work on it if I should replace the fuel lines because no expense spared on my Buick, only the best. They said they're fine for now, um, which was good because I ended up spending a lot less money on that car than I thought I was. We also got all the engine problems fixed. We thought it was leaking coolant. We, me and cousin Scott, you can watch that video, replaced the upper intake manifold. Um, and the shop of course tells me, well, it's actually the lower that go, go on those things, which I've heard mixed you know, things on research. You can weigh in on that if you're a Buick aficionado. Um, so, 
I don't want to drive that car uh, in the winter, especially. If I got to drive one, I'm going to drive the Jetta because it's frankly cleaner. Now you could make the argument that you should drive the dirtier one, but the Buick's worth sort of more sentimental value. This is, of course, has a ton of sentimental value, but I am probably going to sell this car. Now we have big plans for what we're going to do with this car aesthetically. I'll talk about that later. But I do want to um, sort of preserve the Buick as best as possible. I'm not going to drive my 1986 Ford Aerostar, and I can't drive my Fiat, nor would I drive my Fiat in the winter, except if I had, you know, a death wish or wanted to make possibly some entertaining content, which I do want to do, of course, but uh, I'm not going to drive the Fiat in the winter. It doesn't have a clutch out of the picture. So, what are my options? Well, um, in the meantime, Julia's driving this, obviously, but I want to get this transit inspected. Now, the other thing about the transit is the wheel bearings, I think, are starting to go. So now I'm looking at a major service, then I'm going to dump a bunch of money into it, and if I can't get it to pass inspection, I'm going to do a catalytic converter and a wheel bearing and then have it maybe pass inspection. Eventually, I'd like to get it fixed, but in the meantime, I'd like to drive something so I can leave it at a shop and have them do it right. So, where does that leave us? Well, <laughs> if you're a, a person like me, maybe you just buy another car, you know? So, I found a wonderful Subaru Loyal on uh, Marketplace, which I'm going to go look at shortly. I heard this story about actor James Woods once, where he broke down on the side of the road and being, you know, a uh, rich and famous actor, instead of getting his car fixed, he just went to a dealership and bought a brand new car off the lot. Um, so I'm sort of doing a janky version of that here on Janky AF. And the funny thing I thought was, I always tell Julie I want to buy her a car. I like the idea of it's very romantic for me to, uh, you know, buy your sweetheart a car. Um, so I was going to say, you know, what if I just surreptitiously, without telling her, now here's where I get in trouble, um, just showed up with another Subaru to replace her Subaru? Because she loves Subaru, she's obsessed with Subaru, she only wants to drive Subaru. We're talking about buying a car together. I really like the Lexus UX250H, which I believe gets close to 40 MPGs. It's about the Subaru size, the smaller SUV. It just hit the market a couple years ago, so there's not that many used examples, and they're quite pricey new. We're talking about splitting a car, but she really likes the Crosstrek Hybrid. And that just, frankly, doesn't get as good mileage. And I think, like, one of this this car's issues is it really doesn't get good mileage. Now, probably contributing to that is this great uh, muffler situation, which you can see here, which is, if that's not janky AF, then I don't know what is. Now, I do have a potential solution to this, as you can uh, see here. Hopefully, the camera's enough light. The camera's picking that up. So I'm sure that's contributing to her poor mileage. Um, but even before that rusted out, I wasn't getting the greatest mileage. She's getting like 20 miles per gallon. So I have, I, I, I have gotten some. Now here's a, another uh, uh, project for another day. But I bought some of this three-inch, um, you know, just heat pipe, and I bought a bunch of. Um, you can see how well organized. Also, the Transit needs a passenger wiper, so I got that. I'll put that on. I bought a bunch of hose clamps, and I bought two different sizes of hose clamps. So hopefully, I can because the three inches is a little wide, it's more like two, two and a quarter here. Uh, cut it with some tin snips and sort of manipulate it around there, hose clamp it up and get everything just tied together. So it's, you know, at least a cohesive unit and not just coming out. She's basically straight piped it right now. Now one of my big gripes with Subaru and, and this car in particular is, why does this have two mufflers? It has two full mufflers. There's a little boxer engine that makes what? 160, 180 horsepower need two giant full muffler systems i don't know you know like i said i'm not a i'm not a mechanic i'm not the most savvy car person but that just seems to me a little excessive and a little redundant and honestly a big maintenance item that's the thing with subarus i talked about in my impreza review which you can watch here on janky af these cars i feel like you maintain them like you maintain a german car and for a japanese car when i think japanese i just think honda i think toyota i think reliability now i love subaru it's a great great brand but they're they're quirky to me and they do things their own way and i i respect that and i like that but two mufflers on this thing, and of course she, you know, got her whole exhaust system replaced for twelve hundred dollars, and then a year, year and a half later, it's already starting to rust out again. Should have probably gone for the full-on stainless steel job, but you know, sometimes you don't have the money, and so you go cheap, and and that's what happens. Um, but if it was a singular muffler, you know, it just would have been a uh, easier price to to bear, and then you, you know, maybe you're okay with replacing it every two years if it's not going to cost you twelve hundred bucks. So that is car roulette, where you're 
swapping around cars, you gotta keep two cars on the road and you have like six cars, but of course some of them you can't drive in the winter, some of them you'd rather not drive in the winter, some of them need work. So the plan is maybe Julia drives the Jetta for now. I try to get the Transit to a shop. We try to get the Subaru to a shop to see if they can like sort of jankily just do the mechanical stuff. And then maybe I can do some sort of janky body work solution and lights and all that so it can pass inspection. I got to find out what exactly will pass inspection. That's the name of the game. Um, so long story short or short story long, we might just go buy another Subaru because I think it's funny, quite frankly, and the guys is offering it for pretty cheap. And I think the Loyals, I could probably get rid of that thing and bring a trailer in a few months and maybe even, you know, even get out of it even or maybe even make a little money on it if it's uh, as good and as cheap as he says, only 91,000 original miles. Now it is an automatic transmission. I know that's less desirable, but it's a classic automatic, which is another uh, feature here on Janky AF that we do. I love uh, classic cars that are automatics. I feel like everyone hates them because save the manuals. And I've, I'm, I'm all for save the manuals, but I think the automatics too, you know, they get no love. So I'm trying to start that uh, movement. So there you have it. Maybe we'll just go buy another car to solve our car problems. You know, if it's gonna, if it's gonna cost, you know, two, three grand to fix this. I don't, it seems like it's leaking transmission fluid. Um, if it's gonna cost three grand to fix it. Now she does owe money on it, but I think she owes like a thousand dollars on it or something like that. Um, Maybe rather than fixing a car, or fix it, but in the meantime, just buy another car. That's always my solution. So uh, that's our little game of chat roulette. Now, if the if the winter does subside, I may consider, and if the Subaru deal falls through, I may consider putting the Buick on the road and just driving it for you know a week or two while I can get the Transit fixed up, and uh, you know just take super good care of it, and wash it every day, and underbody and all that. Um, but like I said, maybe we just buy another car. So that is our little game of car roulette here on Janky AF. We thank you so much for watching. We'd love if you subscribe. We'd love if you'd like. We'd love if you commented. But we still love you if you don't anyways. So there you go. Um, so until next time, Janky do thank you. And welcome back to Janky AF. So just a quick recap. We did try to go get this Subaru. We gave it an honest attempt. We drove up to Schenectady, which is about an hour away. Of course, I was getting kind of red flags early. Um, and this isn't a rant about buying cars on Marketplace or anything, but it is incredibly frustrating how basically communicative people can be. Like, they... they <laughs> They respond just enough to think there might be a chance that it's worthwhile to go all the way up there and check out this car. Also, they drop the price and kind of sneakily kind of added to the description that now there was a major problem with this car, which I also didn't notice until we got up there. And then, of course, complete no response. I drove up an hour to see this person, totally didn't respond to me. And then later, I noticed that the price had dropped again to, like, nothing, and then all of a sudden the listing disappeared. So... Maybe he had some back channeling going on, that's fine, but, you know, if someone's about to drive an hour up to see a vehicle, like, just inform them if it's not worth their time. Anyways, I digress. I probably should have sort of seen the warning signs writing on the wall. You feel out these transactions, and you're you're reading the person as much or, if, or more so than the vehicle itself. Anyways, had a great time, though. Drove all over Schenectady, got a can of uh, Cataclean, and uh, blasted the transit around, which was pretty fun. Good buddy G6 came with me. So uh, all in all, not a bad day, a fun day, um, driving through the winter wonderland. But unfortunately, um, I wanted the Subaru Loyale to be like the big, you know, exclamation point on the car roulette, which it is not, but that's okay. Um, we're going to keep probably <laughs> looking for more cars, but in the meantime, get Subaru towed up. And uh, hopefully everyone can jump driver's seats one more time again. So, on that note, until next time, janky do thanky.